Potter fans to the Crystal Lake Public Library's virtual Harry Potter Book Week celebration, where we lead you through programs and activities celebrating all things Harry Potter books and characters. I'm Miss Ashley, and I'm gonna get you started today with making your own wand. If you signed up for the library's Take and Make program through our calendar and picked up your supplies, you will have received a bag like this to use. You may also use some supplies around your house to help enhance them. If you didn't get one, don't worry. You can still find some things around your house and join us in the fun today of making a wand. So, Mr. Ollivander says that the wand chooses the wizard, but Miss Ashley says that the wizard or witch can choose the wand. So in your bag, you have a couple of different materials that you could choose to make as your wand, or you can make all of them. So what we have is we have your most basic craft stick that we can make into a wand. We have a straw that you can make into a wand, maybe using the pipe cleaner. And then we have a wooden chopstick that you can use. You, if you are using things at home, you may have a craft stick or you may have a straw. You might also have some chopsticks, maybe from carry out of a restaurant. You could just break those in half, being careful, you know, of the edges of them, that you could use that. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So you'll want to ask your grown-up muggle for help or to make sure it's okay that you use the following materials. You could use scissors, tape, hot glue gun with glue sticks, paint, paintbrush, markers, okay? So go ahead and clear that and we're gonna get started. Okay, after you have your supplies gathered and your grown-ups help or permission, You'll wanna also make sure that you do something to protect your table. I have some craft trays here. You can use a craft mat, a paper plate, a tablecloth. You could use a paper bag, some newspaper, whatever you normally do when you're getting crafty and protecting your surfaces around your house. I know your parents appreciate that. So we're gonna start off with your simplest wand. The jumbo craft stick, you may have um, the regular size craft stick that looks like a popsicle stick at home, that's perfectly fine. Really, what all you wanna do is find something that fits and feels good in your hand when you are doing your spells. So, there are a couple different ways to do this. This is the most basic. You can wrap your craft stick with some tape to give it a handle. So you could do clear tape. I'm gonna use masking tape. I like the way that feels. Uh, I need to save some here for a little bit. So I'm just gonna start here. And then however, if it's wrapping well for you, that's great. If not, you can always rip it and then move it again. And you want a handle that's gonna be suitable for your hand, right? All hands are different. Then you can give it some color if you want. You could leave it like this, or you could give it some color. You could do that in a few different ways. I have a brown classic Crayola marker that I can do, and I'm just going to color it, right? And it's okay if it gets on the uh, masking tape. This is a washable marker, so you can just wipe, wipe it off with your hands or a paper towel it will wash off of your hands, which is great news. If you do, if you color the craft stick like this, but you didn't put a handle on it, after a while when you're carrying it around and playing and fighting, you know, maybe Dementors or Voldemort, you know, it, uh, it tends to rub off on your hand. And while it will wash off, it's nice to have this handle, okay? All right, and you can see I just went around on both sides and got the edges. And now I have a wand that I like. You could choose any color in your marker pack. You can make it purple or orange. 
Again, you're doing what you like to fit your tastes, okay? And I can swish and flick and I'm all done. Maybe you don't like that. Maybe you want something a little fancier. You could do the same thing. You could cover your craft stick in tape. Then you could use a metallic Sharpie, a permanent marker. And I believe I did the gold one on this. And so again, I took it all the way around and you can see I did get some on my tape and I was not about to uh, wash that off or wipe that off because it's permanent marker. Um, that's okay, all right? You could also use paint. I have some, uh, just some metallic tempura paint that I have here. And this is one of the sticks that I did with the paint. You'd wanna make sure to let it dry. And I got some of the masking tape there. I just made a shorter handle. Okay, so that is our first wand. The second wand we are going to make is using our straw, if you, um, if you have it. You may have a colored straw or you may have a clear straw, either way. You could use your pipe cleaner and you could stick it through your straw. And you don't want to get too far out. It's got a pointy tip on it, so you want to push it back in so you're feeling the straw if you go like that. And then I have some excess here. I'm just going to bend it like that. And then I can twist. I'm going to really pinch the straw and the pipe cleaner to start with. But then I can pinch and rotate it around here to make my handle. Sort of shape and variation you would like. And since it does have that pointy, you know, metal point there, I like to tape mine down. You could use clear tape if you want to or any other tape that you have. You might have like a duct tape or a, um, this is Gorilla Tape, like the Gorilla Glue. And I just am gonna try this. I had the thought. So I'm gonna cut a piece of it off with my scissors. And uh, I figured this is thicker, so maybe it'll hold that metal uh, point down a little bit. And I'm just gonna wrap that just completely around in a, a strip, okay? And so that gives me a wand that I don't have to paint or color with marker or anything like that. And that is my wand and I can swish and flick and remember to say <laughs> it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Thanks Hermione for that tip. It did help by the way. <laughs> and our last one that we're gonna do is we are going to do our um, chopstick. So if you got the take and make from us, you have a wooden chopstick that will look something like this. If you're using one from a carryout restaurant, again, you'll want to break them in half and it'll be a little bit smaller, which might be nicer. It, it might fit your hand better. So it's really up to you. And we're going to use the hot glue gun. So I have had my hot glue gun um, plugged in and it's heated up and you can tell that it's heated. You can see there's a drip of hot glue on there. And we're going to talk a little bit about safety. I'm sure you know, but it's always good to have a reminder. You just want to hold the hot glue gun on the handle, okay? Because it's insulated and it's protected and that's where you're supposed to hold it, right? You'll hold it here and then you'll squeeze the trigger here to make the hot glue come out. You don't want to hold up here because it's starting to get really hot. And you definitely do not want to touch the metal tip. And that is the hottest and it will burn you. If you get burnt, it hurts very badly. You want to run it under cold water, but let's not do that, right? And you don't want to touch any of the glue coming right out of the glue gun because it's hot and it will burn you too, okay? So if it's ever giving you anything that's goofy, that's why it's good to have a surface that you are protecting. You can always just kind of wipe it off a little bit if you need to, and um, then you can you know, after that dries, you can pick that off later. Or if it's something you're gonna throw away, you don't have to worry about, it. okay? 
great. So here is my um, wooden chopstick. And there's really, um, you know, no right or wrong way to do this. So that's the good thing. You are gonna wanna create a handle with a hot glue gun, right? So it's gonna end up looking something like this when we're done. So you'll wanna get a larger amount of the glue around it up here. And then any designs that you want around it. You can make blobs, you can make stripes, you can twist it around, okay? So let me show you. I am gonna start by squeezing and getting a big drop of hot glue. If you had a cool bead or something in your craft supplies that you really liked and you wanted to make it the top of your wand, you could, absolutely. This would be a good time to do it. You'd wanna stick it on there. And this wand um, is made in several steps, so you're not going to put the hot glue gun on and immediately be using it, right? That's what you can use some of the other ones uh, while this is drying. So what I'm doing is I'm just squeezing the trigger and I'm running the tip down to get some buildup from my glue, right? And if I get a really big, you know, drop there, I can leave it there or I can kind of smooth it down with my tip. All right, I think I'm gonna do this a little bit. doing so you'll notice what you like and what you don't like right the main thing is, is you want it to feel good in your hand so that you are not distracted from doing your great spell work that you're learning at Hogwarts virtually this year can you believe the school is virtual Hogwarts is virtual no me neither ready for it to go back to in person. <laughs> okay, you can see that I've got a good build up here. And then I can, you know, keep moving this around if I want to fill in some of the bits. I can leave it the way that it is. I can add more glue. I can add more flourishes. So I do need, you can see my glue stick is down low, so I'm going to add a new one here. So I think what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna fill some of this in since I've got a good one at the top. And then I have a little mini glue gun um, and it goes through my little mini glue sticks pretty quickly. So I'm just kind of filling this in. take this all the way down to the end of my wand if I wanted to, um, but I don't want to. I'm just going to run this back through a little bit. some strings those will dry and either add to it or you can pull them off again you don't want to touch it with your fingers don't be tempted to go in there and clean it up it's okay that goes for you too parents <laughs> nobody needs burnt for a Harry Potter wand okay I am loving how that looks so I want that to dry so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick it upright in a jar that I have here to dry, okay? There you go. 
That's why I don't like to go all the way down. It's hard for it to dry and uh, standing up in my cup. Whoops. There we go. And I just got uh, connected with a little piece of the drying glue, so I did not get burnt. Um, but that was on accident. <laughs> okay, so once you have done that, you'll want to let it dry fully. Uh, a couple of hours at least. I like to let mine dry overnight because there's no harm in that. But um, this is what one that's dry looks like. If you did the smaller chop chopstick, here's one that looks um, like that, that it's dry. And uh, you can actually also do this to a straw. If you have a straw and you want to give this a try, uh, but no chopstick, but you really, you're loving how the hot glue looks, you can also do that. So now you could leave it just like it is and go around and you have a wand. This is my son's preferred method. He does not like anything around the hot glue. He doesn't want to worry about it chipping off or getting on his hands. So, uh, and he likes, I think he likes the way the hot glue feels. So you could do that. You could go swish and flick and be on your way. Or you could continue to embellish it. A couple of different ways. You could use, again, the metallic Sharpies or any Sharpie that you have that you like the color. You could run that over your hot glue and let that dry. I'm trying to see an example I have with that. In here. So you can see it's the hot glue. I've taken the Sharpie directly over the hot glue. I didn't take it all the way down. You could if you wanted to, but I like the, the variation of color. And you know, I haven't done some serious spell casting with it. I've not been in a duel, but it has not yet come off my hands, okay? <laughs> the other thing you could do is you could wrap the hot glue in some tape that you have. You could use masking tape. And this is one that I use masking tape around. And I have another one. This is one. So I use the masking tape around it and then I painted both of these with some tempera paint, metallic tempera paint and let it dry. It's, um, you can see the hot glue a little bit less, but you can still see it. I don't think there was much on this one, but it does give you a bit of a wider handle, which I actually like. And I took the paint down on this one a little bit more, so the tip's just a different color. You could do that. If you have something called floral tape, and they make a brown one, it looks like this, you could wrap that around. And when we did this program a couple of years ago in the library, that's what we did. So you could wrap it around the hot glue. This one goes all the way down. And you can smooth it out and you can see it looks a little bit like leather. It looks super cool. The only thing is, is it is sticky to the touch and um, it will lose its stickiness. But if you're excited to jump in and use it, that you might not like that. I, I have to say my son and I do not like the stickiness of the floral tape. Um, but you can do that, it looks super cool, and just let it dry, you know, for a while and that stickiness should go away. You could also use that floral tape um, and the way that it looks, and you can put it around and then you could paint it, right? And so it gives you the cool look, um, but it's not sticky to the touch, right? And this is, the, uh, the takeout chopstick with, it has hot glue and it has been painted. That's what that looks like. This is a straw that has hot glue and this, um, we just did a, fun, a bunch of fun things there. And then I painted that. You could paint the whole straw if you wanted to. So you can see that there's a wide variety of ways that you can make your own wand for our virtual classes at Hogwarts this week.
find one that you like. Thanks for watching and we'll see you here later in the week. Join us, we can make Butterbeer, uh, Felix Felicius, um, The Liquid Luck, and we are going to charm some sand and have lots of other great fun. And don't forget to sign up for trivia on Saturday. We'd love to see you there. Thanks.